the software which is actually working at lexical analysis level is called Lexer. And lexical analysis means checking every single word. So it is actually word analysis. Okay, so Lexer is working at lexical analysis and lexical analysis is basically word by word analysis. All right. And then the output of lexical analysis becomes the input of syntax analysis. Syntax analysis is done by parser. All right, this name of the software is parser and over here like uh, in lexical analysis word word analysis it is over here as in sentences analysis all right so sentences analysis every single statement is being analyzed over here once the syntax analysis is done at the same stage we do semantic analysis Semantic analysis is basically block or paragraphs. All right, so all the blocks of the code, the paragraphs uh, are being analyzed. All right, so afterwards, after semantic analysis all errors are gone now this stage is actually called intermediate stage this is the second major stage in the process of compilation after the source code so what do we call it intermediate stage intermediate stage or intermediate language all right so this is the second so i have seen a question in past papers which asked for the uh, ma major stages of the compilation so source code and then intermediate uh, language or stage at this particular stage what what basically happens that all physical at this stage all physical means non runtime runtime or we can say logical errors are removed all physical errors are removed okay so there are no errors as far as my programming is concerned errors are removed now afterwards I told you that code is generated. So this is called code generation. And then we have got code optimization. And after code optimization, this is the last stage of compilation and that is called machine code generation or object code generation.
object code is produced or machine code is produced. All right. So these are the stages of compilation. So what we have covered yet, just lexical analysis. Now let's start with syntax analysis. Okay. Syntax analysis is the next stage in the process of compilation. In this stage, output from the lexical analysis is checked for grammatical or syntax errors. All right, so syntax analysis. All right, and at this stage we use Bacchus not form. B N F. All right, what do we use? Bacchus nor form or B and F. All right. So every single statement should be written according to the syntax of that particular language or that particular programming language. It is duty of the compiler to make sure that the written syntax is correct through the parser's work of Bacchus nor form. Parser or the software that does the syntax analysis receives tokens from the lexer as an output of the lexical analysis and as the input for itself, for the parser. Expectations. Expectations in our syllabus are to check variable naming conventions assignments and constitution of literals so there are so many things that the syntax analysis can check for but in exams, I have seen, I have observed that just these three, this is not coming from any book or anything. This is just coming from my own experience. And when I have checked these past paper questions, there's just for these three different areas, the syntax analysis questions are formed. Variable naming convention, what does it mean? They, they will define few rules. You know what variable naming conventions are, general naming convention that we have studied in AS where uh, your variable name cannot be of more than 256 character. You cannot use any special character spaces except underscore. You cannot start the name of a variable with a digit, but you have to start it either with an underscore or any character, things like that. So they will be giving you their own rules and they will be asking that whether this particular syntax is correct or not. So we'll look into it. And then assignments, the data which is being uh, assigned, if it is correct or not, the assignment whole syntax of the statement and then the formation of literals. Literals means those values which are being assigned 
to the symbols or variables so if they are formed properly if you do remember from uh, uh, string uh, format that you have to have first two characters and then one um, uh, let's say digit so you, you are checking whether the first two uh, characters are actually uh, are actually alphabets or not and then if there is one digit or not so sig the formation of that literal as per the string format so we'll look into it uh, an alternative of uh, bacchus not form is syntax diagram In syntax diagram, all that can be represented using Bacchus nor form can also be represented graphically using syntax diagrams. So this is the topic today. Let's start with it. So, if you could look at it, uh, first you need to observe what's going on in here. This looks messy. Let me make it a bit simpler for you. All right, now Bacchus nor form or syntax diagram. If you pay attention to it, you would see what? Uh, this thing, which is called letter in less than and greater than signs, enclosed in less than and greater than sign, this word letter is changeable. So this is anything that you name it. And this is considered as one token. All right. So basically, this is the syntax in Bacchus not form. This is the syntax in Bacchus not form. It is letter. So it is basically saying that a letter, if it is coming in from lexical analysis, should be something like this. All right. So these symbols, two columns and equal to sign combinedly are called, is defined as. And this is pipe which is actually called or so letter is defined as a or b or c or d or e so it means that whenever there is a letter written it means it should be either a b c or d or e it it cannot be anything else and this a b c d e should be the way they are given over here all right and then address so this pipe is or this is defined as and this is what we are checking actually so now we are checking what address so address is defined as a letter okay so now if it is letter written letter should be a b c d or e so if it is one time written it might be one of these five Now check, an address is defined as a letter. So if there is a pipe, it means or. If there is just a space, it means end. So an address is defined as a letter and a colon and then letter and digit. So it means that this A colon C9 is correct because this A is coming from this letter. Letter might be A, B, C, D, E, so this is correct and then they should have this colon so there is colon because it says end letter should be uh, uh, 
having a colon in front of it and then another letter so this c is also coming from this letter and then there is a digit now digit is not yet defined but let's say if it is defined it is nine and it is correct similarly this is incorrect why it is incorrect because it's it is supposed to be a letter colon and then another letter but over here there is no letter rather what do we have a digit so this is incorrect all right any number of digits now what does it mean it means when we write a number that number might be a single digit number like five it might be a double digit number like 23 it might be three digits number like 123 so we never know that what sort of number we will see or will appear in input so if we need to define something in terms of syntax which is flexible flexible as in it can take any number what you have just seen in terms of address and letter it is fixed it is not flexible if it is letter written it means that it should be either of these letters either of these letters either it is a or b or c or d or e what if we are expecting that uh, there might be either of these or any combination of these it might be a d e it might be a b c it might be just a it might be a c it might be a d it, it might be a d e b so how do we control that flexibility for that flexibility we can say that any number of letters so let's first define for digits so let's first define integer integer is defined as a digit or a digit again but with integer so what does it mean see integer is defined as a digit or digit and integer so when you see the same variable which is being the same symbol a same token which is being defined when it is being defined it has its own name again in its own definition this is called recursion you will come across this recursion thrice in your syllabus recursion in functions recursion in backus not form recursion in uh, declarative languages we might have not discussed uh, this recursion in declarative languages but we will discuss it all right so this is the recursion when something is appearing in its own definition when a function has called itself from within its own body so over here in this particular syntax analysis the definition has got itself again it means that whatever adjacent to this integer either on the left or on the right can appear any number of times all right so when a definition contains its name inside its body it is supposed to be recursion it is supposed to be recursion and means whatever by it can be repeated any number of times all right so this is actually an integer which is having any number of digits or maybe just one digit and that it ends all right now this digit can be repeated any number of times get the idea now let's go further it might be one it might be one two it might be two fifty three three nine five six or whatever all right they all can be these all can be represented using this one single syntax all right these all are correct 
integers. Why these all are correct integers? Because this one can be represented using this syntax 1, 2, 253, 395, 6, 8, 3986. They all can be represented using this just one single line. We don't, it is flexible. It's flexible in terms of number of elements appearing. Okay. An integer is defined as a digit or any number of digits. All right. So let's see something in terms of uh, syntax diagram. A letter. So syntax diagram for the same Bacchus Nor form, BNF. A letter is defined as A. B, C, D, or E. Now let's see how do we actually control the flow. It should be either A or B or C or D or E. So see, we control it with the use of arrows. So a letter is defined as A, go out, or B, go out, or C, go out. You see, these arrows are not allowing us to go again back inside it to, uh, to have another letter. Rather, we just take one and we go out. All right, so what do you see? If it is letter which is defined as one at one place, at one occasion, it means that it might be either of these. Whether it is written this way or this way, it means the same. Now, address address is defined as a single letter now when this will be encountered it means that we have to take either of these okay so this letter is actually defining either of these so letter and it goes further after letter it takes what colon and then a letter and afterwards a digit and then it goes out so an address would have a letter, then colon, then letter, then digit. All right. And then let's see how this recursion is uh, shown using syntax diagram. So an integer is defined as a digit or any number of digits. So this loop is actually telling, this loop is actually telling, this can go any number of times. Every time it takes a digit, so digit will be defined this way. A digit is either zero or one or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or a nine. But that is only for once. If we like to go again and again and again, we would have to put recursion here. Here, recursion in syntax diagram is shown using what? A loop all right so this loop is telling that we can take this digit any number of times as many as we want to so syntax analysis is basically when we check whether the values which are being assigned the names which are being taken as the uh, identifier names or the whole syntax whether it is correct or not. Let's solve a question. So this is a question, May, June 2004, P3. Describe what happens during the syntax analysis stage of the compilation. What basically happens at the syntax analysis stage of the compilation, tokens which are being arrived are being checked against the BNF for their viability, whether they are accepted or not. If there are any errors in the syntax or there are any spelling mistakes in the syntax that, that will not fulfill the Bacchus Nor form format and they will generate an error. But system does not stop there. The whole process that we discuss is a series of processes which are concurrently working they are all working in parallel words are being checked at lexical analysis they are being forwarded to syntax analysis while syntax analysis is working lexer is working on other words which are 
keep coming. So it goes on and on and on. It's not like that first the whole lexical analysis will happen and then the syntax analysis and then semantic analysis. No, it's a series of work. It, they all are working like a group. All software are working like a group. Whatever that is coming in is being uh, through one stage and it is being passed to another stage. The previous stage and the next stage and the next stage, they all are working in sync. They all are expecting previous stage to feed in and they are keep working. So it is the process which is going on at all stages all the time concurrently. Okay, so then you would have to tell a few of the examples. We will look into it when we will solve past paper questions as usual at the end. At the moment, the question is number seven. Variable name. You see that they have actually asserted over it. They have given it in uppercase. So it means that variable name itself is sort of identified. So variable, variable name is defined in a particular language as an alphabetic character, which may be followed by two digits or another alphabet character. So a variable name is defined as a, vari uh, a digit. Sorry, a variable name is defined in a particular language as alphabetic character an alphabetic character and over here they have shown alphabetic characters. Given that Bacchus not form an alphabetic character is called an alpha. So this is alphabetic character which is defined as either A or B or C or D or E or F and it goes until Z but pay attention that it is all in caps. It is not in lower case. All right, so it means variable name is defined in a particular language as a single alpha, which maybe, maybe means if they want to show it as single alpha, that's fine, that's it. So single alpha or followed by two digits, single alpha, digit, digit, or, or another alphabetic character means alpha, alpha. So let's see how do we write it. A variable name see you would have to actually write it the way it is given in the question all right so variable name is defined as an alpha which may be so this is or which may be followed by two digits so alpha digit and digit all right so maybe if it is not then just this will be taken and if it is uh, being used with digits then this will be taken either of these this is or okay and or another alphabet character so you would have to actually get used to with the formation of the question so it means that or alpha alpha get the idea so a variable name is defined as an alpha which may be or followed by two digits alpha digit digit or another alpha 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 all right and a digit is defined as a digit is defined as as, as zero or one or two or three or four or five until nine use Bacchus nor form and the above definitions these two definitions alpha and digits which do not need to be written out again so we have not written it so the simple the rule is simple so whatever that you have chosen as token in the syntax should be defined so variable name defined here alpha is defined there digit is defined there so all three elements are defined so that's it so if we need to define any of the elements any of the token by ourselves then we would have to actually further define it to the level where there are constants in the definition these are not the constants in the definition rather they themselves require their own definition so let's go further let's see what it says in part two in part b the definition of the variable name is altered so variable name is defined as an alpha or what let's see 
a variable is the name is now defined as either an alpha followed by two digits where the first digit must be non zero so we cannot take this because this digit has got a zero in here so if we take this digit as first digit it means that zero might take place over here so we would have to define our own digit now let's call it non zero digit where we will define it the same way as this digit is defined but we will eliminate this zero from there we'll remove this zero from there and that non zero digit will start from 1 and goes until 9 so we will be like alpha which may be followed by alpha non zero digit and digit all right and alpha followed by two digits where the first digit must be non zero or an unlimited set of alpha it means that we would have to put alpha and then over here we would have to put variable name so i told you that when in the definition the name of it appears it means that whatever that is adjacent to it will be repeated again and again and again okay so that becomes very clear let's write it a variable name is defined as an alpha that is natural or alpha which is followed by nzd this is non zero digit and a digit why right? it is it, it says that followed by two digits where the first digit must be non zero and second one can have a zero so second one is already defined so we will use the same we, this we will have to define ourselves or any number of alpha characters unlimited so that is first define let's define non zero digit so it is one or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine so that's it and then alpha followed by variable name So you can now see that because of inclusion of this variable name in its own definition, it means that whatever adjacent to it in this part will be repeated, can be repeated any number of times. So that is called unlimited set of alpha characters. So this is what we have to do. Since this digit and alpha is already defined, we don't have to define it. But over here, this non-zero digit was not defined. So we have defined it. All right. So get the idea. Now, uh, let's make a syntax diagram. So variable name is defined as an alpha. digit or digit we are doing this one alpha digit digit or maybe this is called maybe well apart so variable name is defined as an alpha and then you go out which may be followed by two digits and then you go out or another alpha okay so this this arrow from this uh, alpha means that variable name starts with alpha and then after another alpha and goes out or maybe just one alpha it goes alpha then it goes out or maybe afterwards two digits so a variable name is defined as an alpha which may be followed by two digits a single alpha or alpha with after another alpha and that's it okay so now this one variable name is defined as an alpha which may be which is uh, which may be followed by non zero digit and digit or 
any number of alphabet characters. I, I told you that any number of characters are shown using what? The loop. So any number of alpha and afterward it goes out. It may be any number of alpha and then it goes out. Okay. Or maybe just one alpha. So one alpha goes out an alpha non-zero digit and digit then goes out or any number of alpha then goes out. So you would have to actually, this is not one particular fixed way doing it. You might be having another idea of it. You can go with that, doesn't matter. All right, so but whatever the flow that you show using uh, arrows must be very clear and can be easily understood. That is what is required. All right, let's solve another question. A variable name is defined in a particular system as one or two letters, means we have got letter definitions, one or two letters followed by any number of digits, including zero, followed by either a dollar sign if there are no digits and end sign m percent sign if there are any digits draw a syntax diagram which describes the variable name so a variable name is defined in a particular system as one or two letters a variable name is defined as one letter or two letters okay so if it is one letter system will take one letter and goes further if it is two letters it goes from both of the letters and goes further all right one or two letters followed by any number of digits digit and this is any number of digits one or two letters followed by any number of digits followed by either a dollar sign if there are no digits so it means that a dollar sign if there are no digits it means that a letter or two letters and then a dollar sign and it goes out or an end sign if there are digits so you should have this idea Okay. A variable name is defined as a letter or two letters which are followed by any number of digits. We use dollar sign if there are no digits. So after letter we take dollar sign and we go out and end sign if there are any digits. So if there are digits after digits we will take this end and we go out. All right. So what you do uh, you try for the Bacchus nor form for the same um, syntax diagram. You do it yourself. Now, for Bacchus nor form, let's suppose this has got. A variety either it is a single letter or two letters let's call it X this is the easiest way or you can do it the way you like this is the easiest way so X is defined as a single letter or two letters otherwise we would have to create the part again and again so let's make it X variable name is defined as X which is followed by let's say y the other part and then and or x which is followed by dollar now x would be either a single letter or two letters x is defined as a single letter or two letters And Y is defined as a digit 
or digit with y. Uh, someone has uh, done it uh, as integer. So that is again perfect. So a variable name is defined as a letter or two letters which is followed by a dollar sign if there are no digits or if there are digits which is y that should be any number of digits and that is followed by and sign or m percent sign all right that is how it will be solved Okay, so today I will share topical past paper questions for this particular part to find out all of the questions related to Bacchus Nor form and try to solve those. Let me tell you one of the questions that is especially challenging and I would appreciate if you don't look into the past paper marking schemes rather first try to solve it yourself and then you check it hold on let me tell you and then i'll share it uh, this is october november 2008 p3 question 10 the following rules define word in a piece of text letter is defined as capital a to z word is defined as a letter or letter and word state why hello is not a word let me tell you because we don't have anything in lowercase all right so it is all in uppercase that is why it is not a word sentence is a set of words ending with a full stop or a question mark define sentence this is a bit challenging and i need you to solve it before the next class tomorrow and let's see if you could do it or not, I'm going to uh, share this file with you all. 